Yep, we're doing three 1053 spoiler videos. I mean, we are going on a four week break after this, so let's just make the most of it. And also this chapter is pretty significant and there's a lot actually that we're gonna be going over in this video that we did talk about in the previous two videos, believe it or not. So we're pretty much going over the entire chapter in this video, so. Let's do it. So the chapter opens up with us seeing the Gorosei reacting to the new bounty posters being released. And they're saying, what is this picture? We didn't allow this to be published. And we told them to get rid of the D in the name too. And then a Marine says, no, sir, we didn't receive such an order. And that picture is from CP0 agent, Mr. Guernica. Then the Gorosei says, reprint this. We cannot let something like this be seen in the world. And then the Marine says, we can't contact the printing factory and then the Gorosei says stop the publication at all costs so that clears up some of the questions we had coming into this such as like if the Gorosei was so against everyone finding out the truth about the rubber fruit then why would they publish a picture of gear 5 luffy on the bounty poster and uh yeah it turns out that they didn't want that in fact they didn't even want the d in luffy's name on the poster and uh the cp0 agent guernica i guess that's the guy that we saw uh, running away from the final moments of the Luffy versus Kaido battle. But anyway, we're finding out why the Gear 5 picture is on the bounty poster, and it's pretty much what you expected because it's Morgan's, and he's laughing here, saying, look at this mystic appearance. Spread this to every corner, my workers. Referring to the news coups that like drop the newspapers everywhere. Last message from the CP0 agents at Wano before they were lost was, it's Big Bomb ship. Okay, so finally, Finally, they're back in the fray. We haven't seen them, or at least their ship, since they arrived at Wano, essentially, and they were knocked off like the incline by King. Now, I don't think this means that, like, Big Mom is on the ship, although she could be. But unfortunately, we're not getting any more information on this stuff, so... Yeah. Then Morgan says, as if I'll let them manipulate information right now. In this currently changing world, facts are the most intriguing. But are the implications here that the big mom remnants stole the photos and just the information in general from these CP agents and then gave it to Morgan's? But anyway, we're seeing more of what the papers are saying. And it says, Emperor Kaido and Emperor Big Mom have been defeated. It took a little time before the world is taken by this huge news. The three pirate captains, Luffy, Kid and Law managed to take down two of the emperors who have ruled these seas for decades, and thus the government has placed a three billion berry bounty on each of their heads an exceptional amount. So, yeah, we found this out in the spoilers yesterday. These are the new bounties of Luffy, Kid, and Law. And yeah, I know some of you are going to be disappointed that Luffy. <laughs> has the same bounty as them, but there's still time for him to climb the ranks. And it could be a division of Big Mom and Kaido's bounties combined because their bounties almost added up to 9 billion. So maybe that's what they're going for here. And also maybe the Gorosei isn't ready to pull the trigger on Luffy being like the world's most wanted man yet, kind of like how his dad is, but for a different fact, because he's like the reincarnation of their Antichrist Joy Boy. Being Maybe they're still trying to keep it uh, as low key on a high key as they can. I mean, especially because they didn't want the picture of Gear 5 on there and they didn't even want the D in the name anyway. So it makes sense that they wouldn't want him to have like the highest bounty and gain even more attention than what he's already getting. But anyway, we're cutting to beneath the castle and we're seeing Hitetsu talking to Robin. And he says, are you interested, Nico Robin? And she says, how do you know my name? And then Hitetsu says, these are my collections. Aren't these girl Kokeshi dolls cute? And Robin says, not really. Why are your collections here? And Itetsu says, this is my secret hobby room and also where I was imprisoned for several years. And Robin says, imprisoned? Who are you exactly? Are you not a swordsmith? And Hitetsu says, swords crafting is something I am talented at, but it's just my hobby since politics really wears one out. My name is Kozuki Sukuyaki, the father of Odin. So yeah, we also found this out in the spoilers yesterday. Huge reveal here. Sukiyaki's original death was like ambiguous and we didn't really 
really necessarily know if it was true or not, but we just kind of assumed that it was. But yeah, he uh, apparently survived and he was uh, in prison slash hiding out down here. And also we knew about this place beforehand actually, because Brooke told Robin that like when he went into his astral form, he discovered this place and the pone glyph within it and that there was also Kokeshi dolls in there. And that lined up with the original little narration that we got on Hitetsu when it said that he was a collector of Kokeshi dolls. And that's when people started putting two and two together like, oh, this guy is somebody special and hey, maybe he's even Sukuyaki. I mean, I wasn't one of them, but there are some people who correctly guessed that he was Sukuyaki this whole time based off of that stuff. But he essentially says that like he's ashamed of himself for not doing anything when Orochi was taking over and Odin dying and everything and that he shouldn't reveal himself. But then Robin, I don't know, kind of like forcefully changes the subject and she says it should be here in this country. The ancient weapon Pluton, the Pone Glyph in Alabasta Kingdom said so. And then Itetsu says, and indeed it is. So yeah, this was revealed in the spoilers yesterday and this is huge. So first of all, Robin knew this the whole time. Like since she read the Pone Glyph in Alabasta in chapter 202, which was like 18 or 19 years ago, she knew that it was in Wano and she didn't say anything for some reason. And Sugiyaki is confirming that it is in Wano. So yeah, Pluton is there. And I guess it might be like inside of Wano because the way that it's like built, it's like a mountain kind of with like water in the middle holding up all of the islands in Wano. So it might be like in there. And I'm assuming that like before they leave Wano, this is going to be addressed. It's not like they're going to be like Zunisha and be like, oh, that's cool. All right, bye. I mean, maybe it won't be a big deal to Luffy at first, but they're going to like convince him that like, hey, uh, Pluton's here. Kind of need to get this. I mean, especially Frankie. So I'm not saying that it's guaranteed the Straw Hats are going to like straight up have Pluton <laughs> coming out of this arc, but something is going to happen with it. So then we're cutting to Ryokyu, Admiral Green Bull, and his name is revealed to be Aramaki. And he's like absorbing people because apparently his devil fruit, whatever it is, is like plant-based as we could infer from the panel in the previous chapter, but he can like produce like vine things from his fingers and they like can pierce people and like absorb their nutrients just like in perfect cell could and he's like absorbing like beast pirates and not just randoms but also like king and queen like he's stabbing through them and he's like sucking them dry like it looks just like out of dvz but queen's saying oh i was staying round on purpose because you know he was fat and he's like getting thin from his nutrients being absorbed and then ryoku said i told you don't do it didn't i someone in my position can't afford to be taken down by mere commanders the Navy doesn't have any spare manpower for cleanup right now, you know? And then he answers his Denden Mushi, and then I think it's made purposely unclear who exactly he's talking to. And he says, hey, I'm here in Wano, send a warship over. Don't let Sakazuki find out about this, all right? And then he says, I love this style of doing things in extreme ways. You did a great job. That's what I want him to say to me after I take this kid's head. Ra ha ha ha. So that's interesting. Interesting. I guess he's talking about Luffy here, or it could be a misdirect. Another really interesting thing here is that we're seeing Ryokuyu's face. And in my video yesterday, I pretty much said that it's very likely that he's not Zoro's dad, AKA Shimotsuki Ushimaru. But now that we see his face, he has like the same nose and eyebrows as Ushimaru does. And also he's like wearing sunglasses, but when his sunglasses are off, his left eye is being covered. And Ushimaru's left eye is the one that is like scarred. Now, does that confirm that Green Bull is Ushimaru, AKA Zoro's dad? No, it could just be a coincidence, but man, it's just so weird that they have so many similarities here. And I'm not trying to say it's guaranteed or whatever. You just make up your mind for yourself. I'll just gladly wait, you know, the next four weeks because we'll probably find out in the next chapter if he is Ushimaru or not. But right now I'll just say, I don't know because I don't wanna hype anyone up unnecessarily. But anyway, after this, we're coming back to the capital and like everyone's essentially partying. The ninjas, the pirates, the minks, the samurais, the yakuzas, and Luffy's like, you guys fought well. Then we get a flashback to Luffy talking to Momo and he says, don't tell the people of Wano about me. Momo's like, but why? You'll surely be recognized as a hero. And then 
we don't get any more info on that. This could be because Luffy just wants, you know, Momonosuke, the Scabbards, and everyone else to take the credit because, you know, it's kind of like their big thing, you know, 20 years in the making. I guess Luffy doesn't want to steal their thunder. But then Kid meets up with Luffy and he's like, the hell are you getting me involved for? Here, take a look. I came here to kill you. I have no idea what happened outside, but... And then he gives Luffy the paper and he says, these are the new emperors. And then we find out, of course, that it's Shanks, Luffy, Buck buggy and Blackbeard. Yes, Buggy is one of the new emperors. We've been talking about this for the last two days. It's pretty crazy, I know. Then Luffy's reaction to this is, what? And like his eyes pop out of his head. Then in the last panel, I guess we're seeing Green Bull again. And he says, well, well, that's some fun music coming from the festival. The Navy has no time for that, you darn kids. The outside world is a mess. And then I guess he's about to go encounter the Straw Hats and everyone. And uh, yeah, that's where the chapter ends. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, guys. And if you liked it, please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.